name is Delta Lou, and today we're going to be discussing Sun House's Preaching Blues based off of his 1965 Sessions double disc LP. And this is a song that features on the first side, the first disc, which would be song number six. And uh, he performs the song twice in that LP. This will be focused on the first one. So, to start off as a formal introduction, this is a particular number by Sunhouse that stems off the regular pattern of playing songs in open G tuning. Songs like Death Letter Blues, Levy Camp Moan, and a scores of others. This song stems and takes a different path and uses the vestipule tuning, which is the alternative in alternative tuning used in Delta Blues music. And this is a type of tuning arrangement that somehow does not really use that commonly. Right off the bat, the only songs that I know of him playing in this tuning is Pony Blues and Preaching Blues. So right there you will know that those are the only two songs and really which he uses the vestibule tuning. Now, vestibule tuning would be based off of open D tuning. And in this, uh, for our learning purposes, we're going to be in open E tuning, which is exactly the way it is played on the LP. And uh, before we kind of break into the material, we first have to kind of prepare ourselves in studying this music and things that I recommend the uh, the learner needs in order to engage the material. First off, the, this is a kind of music where you need to establish uh, a certain kind of finger picking, rolling finger picking motion like this. It would be good beforehand if you already know how to do that. If you don't, I recommend taking classes somewhere but it's very important, essential, that you learn the finger-picking motion in studying Delta Blues music. For this purpose of Sunhouse's song, this is not necessarily, the finger-picking motions are not necessarily intertwined within the song. It's a very abrasive song, it's an aggressive song, and it's a very liberal, you can have a liberal approach in playing the song, in that you don't need to play it note for note per se. It is a very aggressive song built with a lot of emotion. So to begin the course the material, what we need is in engaging in Sunhouse's music, I highly recommend getting a resophonic guitar such as this one. Uh, it doesn't really matter matter by the brand. If you can get a national, that's great. I have a Republic guitar, which is uh, entry level guitar, but very good for this kind of music and does the job. Um, but if you don't have a metal resophonic guitar, that's okay too. You can play on any acoustic guitar. That's fine. There's no problem with that. But in, but what I highly recommend is that if you want to match the sound to to match the authenticity of Sunhouse's sound, I highly recommend getting something of the metal resophonic resonator guitar nature so you'll be able to play along and match up as closely as possible to the original. Okay, I play, I tend to play with a metal resonator guitar. I, I tend to usually use a brass slide. Now, if you don't have a brass slide, that's okay. You can use a glass slide, whatever is more comfortable for you. But for something as aggressive and abrasive as some house's style, I highly recommend using a brass slide. I wear it on my ring finger, but you can wear it on your pinky finger. That's no problem. I also have finger picks. I use plastic finger picks. Why? Because if you use metal finger picks, you scratch up your you scratch up the kind of surface of the guitar. Plastic is, is durable. It's, uh, I highly recommend it. It, does, it doesn't damage the, the face of the guitar and it's very versatile and flexible. So you have 
these components of your guitar, you have your slide and you have your finger picks. I only use a thumb and an index finger. What's optional is you can use it on the middle finger if you want, if you choose. That's up to you. That's in the case that you have the discipline of a finger picking capabilities, which is expected in studying this music. But for this song, it, it's not necessarily essential, but it's good to know. So, this song, Preaching Blues, is a fairly, is one of Sunhouse's fairly more simpler songs in his repertoire. But it's done in a tuning called Vestipal Tuning. Normally, Vestipal Tuning, as a default, is set into open D tuning. But in this case, Sunhouse is playing it two steps up in E, open E. So he's got his guitar tuned to that tuning, open E tuning. And it's going to be high tension. If you don't feel comfortable with r raising your strings that high, you can set your guitar to a default D, open D tuning, and put a capo on the second fret so you don't wear with the strings. But for this purpose, the key is not too high, so we can go ahead and tune up to, to each other. The way my guitar is tuned up right now is exactly tuned to what you, were, you will hear in the LP exactly to what Sunhouse is playing. So right off the bat we're tuned exactly tone-wise as far as keys are concerned. So for this moment let's tune together. I'm gonna to play my strings one by one. Okay, I'm gonna be starting with the first, the top string, which is gonna be tuned to an E. So I'm gonna play the top string. It goes like this. This is my E. So adjust your strings accordingly. The fifth string is going to be a B. So tune accordingly. This is my B. This is the fifth string. My fourth string is an E. third string is going to be a G sharp. My second string is going to be a B. And finally my bottom string is going to be an E. This is my first string, E. together with a full chord it'll sound like this. So we are tuned together and we are tuned to exactly what is being played on the LP. Now for the more advanced player if you don't want to tune your strings, your machine, machine heads that high what you can do is tune to open D and put a capo on the second fret and that way you will also be tuned together with me. That's in the event that you don't want to tune your strings that high. And that's perfectly fine. But for this purpose, in order to fully view the neck board without any distractions of a capo, we're going to stick to tuning it in this way. Free of capos and everything like that. So, in Sunhouse's music, there are several patterns that I like to appropriate with, with the right hand. And usually, in Delta Blues music, you, uh, you kind of situate your palm over the, uh, the fifth string, rest it, and with your thumb, you dictate the bass notation like this. But in Sunhouse's music, there's a more liberal approach in strumming the chords. I tend to do a pattern where I do 
just down strokes with the thumb. And I like to bring up the chord with my index finger, I flick upward. So, you know, this is going to be something that's very typical in his progressions. This very simple chord progression arrangements in some houses music. So if you like for an example a lick from the song notice the discipline in the right hand is very relaxed. It's loose, there's down strokes, there's up strokes, there's no disciplined patterns to be had in some houses music which is also an excellent incentive of playing his music. Very expressive, and it's ultimately dictated by you about how much emotion you want to pour into your performance of his song. So now that we've kind of set up the foundations of the music, the basic components, of what you need to study the material, we're going to go ahead and start with the introduction and we're going to be discussing the very predominant lick that reappears in the song. And it's a very easy lick that, that's repetitive and very easy to get off the bat. So let's start with the introduction. Okay, we're going to start with the introduction, the predominant lick that reappears throughout the song and uh, it's going to sound like this. So this is the introduction. One, two, three, four. So we're going to be discussing that. So right off the bat, everything that you're going to be doing in this lick is going to be limited to three frets. It's going to be the twelfth fret, the third fret, and then it's going to be open, open chord. It's going to be those three components that make up the structure of the lick. So the introduction, I like to bring it in, bring the song into intro by starting off with a bass note like this. Even on the song, he just he just starts off with the lick. But it's good to to set up the song with a bass note like this. Okay, so that is a kind of thing to help me initiate the song to set it up well. Even though that's not what is done in the song, he just starts off with a lick immediately. But let's break down the lick in general. So, so what we have here is uh, he starts off his lick on the 12th fret on the 1st and 2nd strings. Okay, the 1st and 2nd strings. And with your slide you're going to be hovering around you're going to be dabbling over the 12th fret and you don't want to press too hard. You want to have this very tender, gentle pressing of the strings on the 12th fret with a light tension. All right? And what I'm doing here on my right hand is that I have a tendency to rest my palm, the side of my palm, rest 